So hi, uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm David. I do memory management stuff, and because I enjoy torturing myself, I started looking into map counts. First, let's, let's explore simpler times. Uh, what does simpler times mean? Simpler times are when we didn't have large folios, we only had single pages, and maybe we had huge TLB pages, but uh, essentially what they shared, they only had a single 31-bit map count per page, uh, and that expressed the number of page tables that are currently, presently mapping that page. And that, that had very clear semantics in my point of view. Uh, we had a single function called page map count, and if it's zero, the page is not mapped. If it's larger than zero, it is mapped somewhere. If it's exactly one, it's mapped exactly once, so it's exclusive. Uh, if it's bigger than one, it's mapped shared. And if our page map count corresponded to uh, our page count, that meant that all references that uh, we have to our page are from mapping, so there is like no good pins or page cache or anything else involved. So it's really just like page tables, essentially. Uh, well, we added THP, and uh, it got a little bit confusing and complicated, and um, I, I don't want to blame anybody. <laughs> it, it was a natural evolution of the concept, I think, and we, we ended up with quite interesting things like PG double map uh, functions, total compound map count, total map count, page map count, page trans huge map count, and even more, and if you ever looked at reuse swap page that uh, Linus essentially triggered to remove at some point, you, you understand that it was quite some complexity. And fortunately, uh, at least some stuff was uh, uh, improved. Uh, shout out to uh, Hugh Dickens, he did a really nice cleanup to, to uh, some of that. And uh, Matthew Wilcox, Folio work, I think that really improved to, to, to get rid of, for example, I mean, what did we have here? Uh, total map count, or uh, the total compound map count is essentially just folio map count nowadays, so it's much cleaner. So let's explore the current scheme that we have. Uh, current scheme is that we have for uh, all THPs or large folios, however you want to call them, that are partially mappable. We have an entire map count that today for THPs just says like how many PMDs are mapping that thing. Uh, we have a subpage map count for each individual page uh, in our folio. Uh, and then we have number of pages mapped, which says, yeah, well, how many out of these pages are actually currently mapped. Uh, and to calculate the folio map count, we do the sum of the entire map count and then over all of the subpage map counts in the worst case, and we get a magic number. And the semantics of that magic number are almost clear. Um, I mean, if it's zero, the folio is not mapped. If it's bigger than zero, uh, the folio is at least to some degree mapped. Uh, if it's one, it's exclusively mapped. Well, if it's bigger than one, we're not quite sure what's happening because, I mean, it could be two PDEs of the same process mapping the folio. We really don't know. And But again, like the last part, if our folio map count corresponds to the folio ref count, we know all references are for mapping, so there are no good pins, nothing else on that. So um, regarding exclusive and shared, um, there, there are some examples where you, for example, can end up with a folio map count of two, um, and in only one case, in the first case, we would consider that as exclusive, and the, the other cases we would consider it as shared. Um, and we know there's have a function that is called folio likely map shared, which makes an educated guess, uh, and we're trying to improve that educated guess, but it's we're, we're not there yet. Sometimes we might, we might say, well, it's exclusive, but it's really not exclusive, it's shared. We still do have some leftover functions that consume a page. Um, for example, page mapped, and as we heard today, as in Willie's talk, that's going to be removed. And that's really a low-hanging fruit, I have to say. Total map count is on its way to be removed. Uh, I think it's not upstream yet. It's in MM stable, if I'm not wrong. Um, but at least it, it's easy to remove. It's simply a translation to folio map count. Well, and then we have page map count, and there is really no direct translation to that. Um, it does not translate to folio map count for large folios. Um, but fortunately, um, I removed most of the users, so we are down to a handful of call sites, and it's going to be harder to replace, but we'll talk about how, how we're going to handle the remaining pieces. 
So what's problematic about the current approach? Um, first of all, um, if we have large folios now that are not traditional THP, they're always PTE mapped, so we always have to involve the subpage map counts. Um, maintaining these subpage or per page map counts is expensive, so we can see when we map our unmapped pages that we do a lot of atomic operations that we ideally wouldn't be doing. Um, as we learned today with Memdesk, uh, it's really undesired to allocate, let's say, I, I, I don't know the math, but I, I think like for one gigabyte THP, you, would, you need quite some subpage map counts. Uh, and uh, for example, doing the sum over that is just not going to work. Um, if, if we're looking into some VMAP optimizations like we did for UGTLB, it's even going to be impossible to some degree to have these subpage map counts. So. Um, um, Clearly, we want to do something about that. Um, as we learned, it's insufficient to, to, to answer is this folio mapped exclusively or shared, which is going to be important later. And uh, as soon as we want, want to handle folios that are larger than a PMD, let's say 4 megabyte on x86 or 1 gigabyte, um, it, it's really unclear what our accounting scheme should look like. And we, we, we faced the same problem with huge TLB when we had this high granularity mapping that we were running into similar issues on how to actually do the accounting there. So the, the natural extension of our existing approach would be that we have like per page map counts and then we have for each PMD region we have a dedicated map count and we have a map count for PODs and if you scale it up, if it would cover multiple PODs, it would need multiple map counts. So we're going to need more map count madness um, and of course it's not going to perform well. So. Um, I, I, I strongly assume we don't want to do that, but it's our backup solution if everything goes wrong. So can, can we simplify and maybe even improve? Um, so unfortunately, the colors are not very well, but fortunately, I added some, <laughs> some smileys. So um, for small folios, we're in a happy world, uh, simpler times again, it's, it's all easy. Um, upstream, currently, if, if we want to get like how many total mappings do we have to answer folio map count and also to detect unexpected references, uh, we, it, it, like we have to do the sum over all of them and it's not really that good. Shared versus exclusive is yeah, borderline broken, in my opinion. Um, so we have to do something about that. Uh, in MM Stable, we have queued that we have a single large map count for each large folio in addition to the other accounting, which makes um, most of our answers actually uh, yeah, reasonably well to be answered. Uh, shared versus exclusive, I was able to improve that a bit for some obvious cases. Um, it's not precise yet. Um, and in the future, um, in, in my opinion, where we can get to is that we can answer per folio information, but we would lose per page information. And um, for the most part, that's good, but if there is one case where we want to detect if an anonymous folio is partially mapped because we want to add it to the deferred split list. For the common case, that's going to work out for some more experience complicated cases, it's not going to work out and we might have to do some scanning on the page reclaim path and just flag them. Um, but we're going to see uh, what we can do about that later. So let's talk about some issues uh, that I stumbled over when working on that. So um, for, for those of you that don't know, don't know the terminology, we have RSS, USS, PSS. RSS is really just like how, how much memory is mapped into our process. Um, um, the f formal definition from Wikipedia is, is uh, how much memory is occupied by our process that is held in memory. Um, the USS is really the portion of that memory that is guaranteed to be private. So that, that's important, it's guaranteed. It, I think it doesn't have to cover all cases where it's private, but we want to get as, as, as close as possible to the case because the USS really tells you if I kill that process and it, it quits, how much memory will I free up? That's like a guarantee. And then there is the PSS and the PSS really is a pain in the, uh, you know what, uh, so it, it, it tries to be smart about calculating like how many sharers are per page and how can it distribute the memory and um, most most probably we're got not going to be able to keep that precise number. We can get close to that, but not precise. Um, but if you take a look at, like if we have a large folio with 16 subpages and only a single page is mapped, for sure if we would like 
unmap that page and free it, we would free up 64 kilobytes. So um, the, the USS and the RSS and the PSS, they, we would state four kilobytes, but in my opinion, it should actually be 64 kilobytes, but I don't think that we can really change that. Um, th this model has a nice side effect. If you would split the folio, that the numbers wouldn't change. Right, if you would split the folio, you would free essentially all pages except the one that is still mapped. Your RSS, PSS, USS would be unchanged. But it's just weird if you read the, read the formal definitions and it doesn't really fit into the world of large folios. Unless your large folio is fully mapped, in which case it's all perfect and it's just all working as designed. So, um, Matthew asked for it, uh, <laughs> he, he shall have it, uh, a world without per page map counts. Uh, I think one way to achieve it is the following, that we have um, a single map count per folio. In addition, we want to know how many of these mappings are PMDs, how many of these mappings are PUDs, but it's just like single numbers, so it would be three magic numbers, for example. Then we have a, a function that's called folio average page map count, and that is easily calculated if you if if you have like the map count and the other map counts, you can easily calculate like what is the average that each page is uh, is mapped. It's not going to be precise to the page map count, but uh, in in the common case, we're, we're getting close to that. And last but not least, what I think we need is we need to make folio likely map shared actually as precise as we can get, and that would mean that it, it, it's, it would much rather resemble folio map shared. Uh, I have an approach for that. Um, I'm not going to talk about, uh, at, uh, about that this time, because it's, it, it would get a little bit more involved. But what it would look like is that we only track like these things, um, the mappings, the PUDs, the PMDs, and then some additional data to answer uh, that folio likely map shared. And with that, we could get close, but there's a ca uh, catch to it. Now, if we take a look at the remaining page map count users, um, we, we have like in a page map and in, in S maps, we have quite some users of that, and these are the remaining ones. Um, mo most of them just want to have an answer if, if it's like shared or exclusive, and we heard about that. That's essentially the USS, that's the Unix set size. So if we consider a folio as shared as soon as a single page is shared, then we still have the guarantees of the USS. So uh, according to the formal definition of the USS, we're good. It gets more complicated once we're in the PSS, so in the, in the uh, uh, per percentual um, stuff uh, and some some other numbers of okay, page count i'm not too worried about that and numa maps i'm also not too worried about that uh, but we can use the folio average map page map count to get close to what we had and we're going to talk about the effects in a minute um, there, there is just like this information how many pages are mapped which are kind of stored in number pages mapped um, we're going to lose that um, the one user is when we do a system node memcg um, um, accounting for, I, I think it's called Anon, and then it's mapped for the page cache. So if you take a look at proc mem info, there is a mapped and there is an Anon. Um, as soon as a single page of a folio, large folio is mapped, we would have to account the whole thing. And as soon as that goes, we would have unaccount the whole thing. Should mean if you have like a two megabyte THP and you unmap everything except a single four kilobyte page, we would still have two megabytes mapped in that regard, but only a four kilobyte would consume memory. Which on, like if you, if you take a look at it from a certain perspective, that memory is getting consumed and maybe that folio cannot even be split because it's maybe long-term pinned. So to some degree it makes sense. And uh, I took a look at the uh, memcg reparenting code that was recently refactored. I, I think there is a bug in there. I think we always assume that it's fully mapped. Um, people might want to look into that. Um, it, it, it essentially has a check, like if folio map, then I'm gonna subtract it from the ones, um, from the one control group and add it to the other one and they always use like number, number folio number pages. So that's certainly wrong. Uh, once we have that, it would be correct. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that's gonna be, um, that's gonna be one of the changes that I'm not quite sure what the effect will be, yeah? 
charge reparenting, I think it's called reparenting. I think it's charge, is it charge moving? I think when you want to move one folio from one MemCG to another MemCG. Oh, even better. So we, we can remain. But the code was recently moved, I think. So maybe it's. It was changed to four years recently. Okay, maybe. That's what, so we're good. Okay, so um, we'll have to see what effect that change has. The code has been moved just to be deprecated. Oh, even better. <laughs> Uh, and when, when, I'm, when I'm converting code to use folios, I have no idea what's V1 and V2, so I, I just convert it. I don't, I don't even know, man. <laughs> right, so um, I talked about that sometimes we have to detect if an anonymous folio is partially mapped in order to add it to the deferred split queue. So if we're under memory pressure, we actually want to split it and free up some memory. In, in the common case, when we have an exclusive anonymous folio, that will work as expected at some point, but if you have some weird combinations of co copy and write sharing between processes and both processes do something weird to achieve like partial mapping, then uh, we might be in trouble and we'll have to see how severe that is and uh, if we can solve it by scanning or something else. Uh, I mentioned that like we have these USS and PSS changes. Uh, USS, well, we might under-indicate, which is fine. The RSS, which I think is the important part, will, will remain unchanged. And the PSS is that we might now over or under-indicate the PSS in case we have partial mappings of folios. And I, I, I was able to construct some extreme examples. I think in the common case, most folios are fully mapped and we in the remaining cases, it's like a matter of a couple of kilobytes. So I, I'm not so sure how much we actually care about in, in, in reality. But my plan is to have a separate kernel config once we reach the point where we can play with the approach, that we can remove the subpage map counts, we can learn what needs to be done, uh, what are the effects on real workloads, and then we can see how to proceed from there. Yeah. Do we have any easy way to find out how many partially uh, mapped uh, THP do we have? Or do you need some page map interfaces to, to query for that? I think we right now don't have a way to identify that. I mean, we have our deferred split queues, and you can walk these and find out, but that's really all of the information we have. And So from the user space point of view, you have no way to find out? No. OK. But again, like we're going to do a separate kernel config option, and once we are sure that we cover most cases and the effect will be negligible, then we can move forward and actually um, make it real. Let's call it that way. So I have some examples. I'm going to skip most of them. Um, just the interesting one is maybe to see the effect. So assume you like you have a single, single subpage of an order four folio, so it's 16 subpages. A single one is mapped in in above example. It's mapped by 16 subprocess. In the below, it's mapped by 512. Uh, our folio average page map count, there's an error there. It would be one, so you could see that like the PSS before that, it was 0 0.25 and it was increased to four kilobyte. Again, I don't know who actually cares about PSS to that degree, but it's a change, so it's worth uh, spilling out. And in, in, the, in the lower example, I mean, it's, it's even less. So um, we'll have to understand who really cares about that. I, I don't think it's that critical, but we'll have to see. In the past, we've had, um, let's say, uh, low memory killer implementations that cared about, or they at least claimed that they care about PSS, but I never really understood what that is really good for. I, I think they are much more interested into the USS, because that really means like that is the guaranteed amount of memory you're going to get when you kill a process. PSS is likely just like an estimate, like looking at the whole system, what, what is the percentual consumption, it, it's weird. Even USS doesn't exist, because uh, you can share a memory uh, uh, MM struct uh, among different processes without sharing signal handlers. So you kill one process and there is still other user of that MM, so you are not releasing anything. So. Right, but I mean in the common case, you, you don't do that, right? 
common case or, or not, um, let, let's say there are clever ways to abuse that feature. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But I mean, if you know what's running on your system, you know like which workloads you run, then usually you could expect like one mm is one process uh, in, in the common case, I think. Sometimes, yes. Yes. <laughs> I think most of the times, but I mean, that, that, that's debatable. But um, Yeah, probably the, the most interesting use case I have seen for that is uh, that if you have a huge uh, address space that you want to kill and don't want to wait hours to, for that yep. to happen, then you just spawn a lot of processes to tear that. Um, we we uh, do that for, for VMs as well nowadays uh, in user space. Uh, and I mean, you, you would still like kill it and it would get freed up. So I think that's the interesting part. I mean, you kill it, but you're going to defer kill it. So, I mean, you would get that memory at some point. Yeah, you know, yeah, I can speak about Android. Uh, RSS is very important. PSS is used sometimes, but we try to minimize that because it's quite expensive. And USS is not really used for, uh, at least in low memory killer, it, RSS is the one that is being used. Even better, because RSS will not change. <laughs> So, um, so some issues and some questions um, Matthew raised um, that we have might have ref count and map count overflows, assuming like we have a one gigabyte THP and we PTE map the whole thing and we map it, I don't know, into how many processes, maybe into 10. Uh, then we might already like run into uh, overflows. I think there are, there, there are three parts to it. On the one hand, it's not really an issue for small folios today. Um, and if it would be an issue, somebody would really try to break the system and may maybe we could catch that. Um. Uh, right now it's really hard to do because what you need is one struct VMA, sorry, one struct VM area struct uh, per map count, so you need to have a system with terabytes of memory to make that happen. Uh, so anything you could do to increase the size of struct VMA would be great, Soren. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's very impractical today, but when we get into large folios, Right, 32-bit, um, I'm also not so sure if, uh, like, on 30-bit on machine, we really care about it. Do we care about 32-bit in large folios? That's, that, that's <laughs> another question. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Why, why does 32-bit come up? I mean, map count is 32-bit on... No, 32-bit, sorry, architectures. Meaning like you have 4 gigabyte of main memory and then maybe some extensions like... I mean, you, you won't have a 32-bit architecture that has, I don't know, a terabyte of main memory, would you? No, we... No? Yeah, that, that, that's the point. <laughs> but I'm sorry, I don't understand. But map count itself is 32-bit. Uh, that 32-bit is only about... Uh, it's confusing okay. architectures that are 32-bit uh, architecture set. So 32-bit addresses. Uh, map count is 31-bit. Yeah, well. it, it's just confusing, yeah. <laughs> I would claim, man, it would be a daring claim that we mostly do not care about 32-bits at all uh, in a kernel. And uh, for THP specifically, I, I would just uh, make that 64-bit only and see who complains and why. Because if there is a real use case, then yeah, sure, we have to buy the bullet and, and do that properly. But uh, if that's, we just do that because it happens to be working most of the time. And if it's not, we just reboot, then we probably do not care all that much. And we shouldn't really be implementing a lot of complexity for something that is not really used. And, and same, same for, for the real time. I know who might care. PowerPC at 855. Why, why would they care? There is constant flux of punches from the Christoph, uh, I don't remember, Leroy, right, about improving PowerPC 850 something with THP and huge TLB and the uh, things. Uh, is, is and that I think it's the only. buying nowadays? Hmm? Is that what customers are buying nowadays? Or <laughs> I don't know if it's a hobby system. I, I think it's more of a hobby system, but uh, he does care about these things. So, on the other hand, if that is imposing a lot of maintenance burden to the whole MM community, then it's probably a cut to mate, right? 
Uh, I, I mean, the thing is why I'm raising 32-bit architectures and THP or large folios is that if, if, if we want to implement the folio mapped share properly as I envision it, we might need some more struct page data, so some metadata we have to store. For 64-bit, I can squeeze it into the existing mechanism for 32-bit, it's not going to work, so I would have to special case that or work around that. And I'm really not interested in su supporting that. It, I mean, once we reach memdesk, it's going to be easier, but until we have memdesk, it's going to be a pain. Because like for order, order one folios, we are pretty much out of memory for 32-bit for, uh, architectures. And I think it's the same with real-time kernels. We might have to put in a, a, a spin lock when we perform map count changes of large folio. And um, it, 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 that doesn't usually work quite well with real-time. Um, because they want to replace, I think, each spin lock by a real-time mutex, but if it's located in, in struct memmap, it's like in a, a struct page metadata, that's not going to work. It's going to blow up, yeah. So, I mean, you could do some hashing, you could implement some hashing of stuff, but then again, like, are we, are we trying to make something run that doesn't even make sense? For example, I mean, THPs and, and real-time, I think that's not going to work. But in general, large folios, I mean, it's not just about traditional THPs nowadays. It's about, like, order four, order two, order three. Um, real-time is about predictability. Uh, all you are talking about is everything but predictability. Right? Yeah, exactly. OK, perfect. So it's going to be, like, small and huge TLB, and that's it. Or not even huge team. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, <laughs> what transparent huge, huge tape, um, page table or pages? I I don't really see that as real time. Like I said, that also causes its own uh, unpredictable. I mean, real time. I hate the term real time. I'd rather call it deterministic. So when in real time, we really care about determinism. So. This is something that's it's basically goes against real time in general. So if you, I mean, well, well, the question is, what do you actually break in real time? It's just going to be that it's the question is, what's going to break if you have this? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. If it just takes a long time, like if you have a spin lock, like a raw spin lock held for a long time, I really don't. We probably won't care. Okay. But as long as it doesn't cause actual deadlocks, that's no, no, no. Yeah. Hopefully not. <laughs> Yeah, the, the first experiment might be just to make THP disabled on the real-time kernel. I think that's all. That's already the case. I'm more concerned about the future where we might want large folios everywhere, because large folios and right. <laughs> the one use case is like you know high frequency trading. They like sometimes use a real-time kernel, but I think that's just a whole new. I personally don't care. <laughs> Excellent. That, that's the answer I was looking for. Uh, so coming back to the ref count and map count overflows, I think we have two approaches. We can make both of them bigger, uh, meaning like 64-bit, or, and I think that has at one point been discussed in, in, a, in a THP Cabal meeting, that you could actually like only increment the ref count as soon as the map count goes um, from zero to not zero, and decrement it when the map count goes from not zero to zero. And with the large map count that is now in, in, in um, MM stable, you can actually do that quite easily because like we know the whole map count of the large folio. So that's something to think about. I, I, I was not quite sure how the ref count design would work out with, in the memdesk world, so that's why I'm raising both proposals. Of course, the second one is quite interesting because you can maybe avoid atomic operations to the ref count in quite some cases. I mean, we do batching now. We do batching of ref count updates. Like if you unmap 16 PTEs of the large folio, we're only going to decrement it once. But if the folio is already mapped into another process, for example, you wouldn't have to do any update to the ref count, um, which is, I think, quite interesting if you're um, if we go down that path. And then I, I, that, that's going to be my last point for today, unless there are any questions. Uh, we have this insert page function, uh, and we currently perform map count updates, and that was raised by Willie as well. And I think that goes into the direction that w what is the folio? Because 
Sometimes we might get in something, some, somebody just does an alloc page to allocate a compound page and passes it in and we update map counts and stuff like that for something that was allocated by some driver. I think we really shouldn't be doing that. But then that code is also used by our beloved DAX implementation, DAXFS, which I think passes in page cache, pages. I, I really not sure what they're what they're passing in. Is it a folio, really? It's, it, it, uh, it, I, I don't know if it's a folio or not. I'm kind, it, DAX doesn't use the page cache, but it does allocate pages and... Dan, but they some, somehow store, store something, right? They store something somewhere. For example, if you have a zero page and, and you, you, like you have a file hole, and you have a zero page map, they remember that somewhere, that there is a zero page, and I, th I thought it would be the page cache where it, they remember it, it. It uses the page cache, but it stores entries in the page cache which are not pages. So, ah. Yeah. yeah. No, I, 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 I'm actually quite comfortable with not using the map count on random pages and only using it on folios which belong to the page cache and folios which belong to uh, anonymous. Yeah, I, I mean, anonymous is not even because he's thinking about struct device pages, and I don't think you've got to. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to press you for an answer right now, John. <laughs> I mean, anonymous pages are not even getting passed into that interface. Uh, uh, we we find, but how would we identify a page cache page if somebody maps? Mapping is not null, and uh, crossing fingers that nobody else overrides that in the drive. <laughs> Yeah, there are people who override that, and I and they 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 need to uh, be excised from the kernel, and that is part of what I'm looking at doing over the next few months. So yeah, right. Because my my idea was maybe anything you want to pass into these interfaces, maybe it should deserve a, a separate folio type. So you could just say, if it's not that folio type, I'm gonna reject it. But that would mean that we would have to take a look at all users change them accordingly. Um, but there's already the documentation, I think, that says that like if you do alloc if you want to pass in a compound page, you have to prepare it. So maybe we should just provide a function to do that for you and then we could like wrap everything uh, everything at, at a single place. But yeah that that certainly is an interesting one. Uh, um I, I just a quick question. Don this overflow is is it just a temporary concern? Uh, how how much should we be just looking ahead to the end game on on the struct page when we presumably have as much room as we want? For, then for then each. we can just use 64-bit, I right. think. Right. But so, I mean, for small folios, maybe you also don't want to waste 32-bit on that for, for each counter. So it would be 64-bit in total that you would waste. Um, question is if, if you want to do that or not. I think Willie today talked about, he's no longer here, he talked about uh, that like even for small folios, we would already grow the effective memmap size. Of course, you would grow it here by another eight bytes. Yeah, for yeah. For small folios, you, you go up to eighty-eight. I think he said. Yeah. But I, I was just wondering: is this just the interim? And the interim is what a, a couple years between? Yeah, yeah. I think so. I think so. All right. Uh, if there's nothing else, that's it. Thanks a lot.